God knows your name, you never have to worry about who doesn't. It doesn't matter who overlooks you because God always sees you. It doesn't matter who mocks your efforts because God is proud of you for having the courage to begin. Further, when he gets ready to elevate you, he will use whatever or whomever he has to, even your enemy. At any given moment, your God can whisper your name to the right person to bring you out of a place of obscurity and into a position of greatness. Therefore, don't focus on who has looked down on you, ignored you, denied you in the past because people tend to limit you based on their limited perspective and perceptions of you. They judge you based on what they see externally and they try to put you in a box based on what they feel you deserve. This tends to happen when people know of your name but they don't know your identity. They don't know who God created you to be at your core because only God does. So instead of worrying about people dismissing you, not acknowledging you, not calling your name, I encourage you to allow God to transform you, evolve you, and call the greatness out of you so that you can be the answer he needs you to become in this earth. Further, when God does call your name, don't minimize who you are. Don't shy away from what you have become. Embrace your growth, your transformation, your identity, boldly answering when he calls. Hi, my name is Alicia, and today we're discussing how God overrides human perceptions of us based upon what he intimately knows about us. I will also be interpreting three dreams. So if this sounds like something you're interested in, please keep watching. In a dream, I saw a dark stage, but there were several lights with fixtures illuminating on that stage. The leader was standing on the stage in front of an audience. I saw several people in that audience wearing name tags. Because they had name tags, the leader knew their name and called them by their name. However, there was one woman in the audience who didn't have a name tag. She was seated in a shadow. She was unseen. All of a sudden, there was a voice from the stage that was booming above the voice of the leader. This voice called her name. She was then escorted up five wooden steps onto that stage. I don't know what clothing she had on before, but as she stepped up on the stage, her clothes began to transform. What stood out to me was her purple and gold headdress. So the first aspect of this dream that I noticed was the stage. And we know that a stage is an elevated platform. You can be easily seen from a stage. Therefore, in a dream, a stage would represent a highly visible platform. The stage in this dream was very dark. However, I noticed that there were several lights with light fixtures illuminating on this stage. As we discussed last week, light and dreams, particularly natural light from the sun, will represent Jesus, the son of God, the light of this world. However, in this dream, the light was not from the sun. It was from an artificial source. The word artificial is synonymous with words such as counterfeit, man-made, not genuine. It is something that is fake. So in this dream, on this dark stage, was a false light illuminating. It reminds me of the scripture that says that Satan masquerades around like an angel of light because the word masquerade means a facade something that is fake and in that verse the word light is false which means artificial or natural light so therefore the leader on this stage will represent someone in a position of authority with a highly visible platform yet this person was not sent by God on the contrary this person was faking pretending to operate under the guise of the natural authentic light of God but in reality was operating in an artificial false light. This leader begins to call the names of those in the audience who wore name tags. However, there was one woman who didn't have a name tag and she was seated in a shadow. So this could mean that the woman felt as though she was in the shadow of those whose names were being called. The phrase being in someone's shadow means that someone else's achievements and abilities are so great that you are not noticed or valued. So the woman in this dream represent those who feel invisible, unseen, unnoticed, uncelebrated. Those surrounded by others who are achieving great things by those who seem to have greater ability. In the dream, the leader knew their names. They all wore name tags. A name tag is an identifier, so it will represent your identity. And because this woman had no name tag, it could mean that she was suffering from an identity crisis. Perhaps she was questioning who God says she was because no one else knew who she was. Have you ever been in a position where everyone around you seems to ignore you, undervalue you, and treat you as though you were invisible? I question God about this 
different because it always seems as though the very ones that you have helped in the past, the very ones you have prayed with and prayed for are the very ones who turn around and undervalue you. They don't support you. And initially it did hurt my feelings, but I had to grow up. And one thing that I learned along the way is not all the time that people are overlooking you. And it's definitely not because you're invisible. Sometimes God will hide his secret weapons. He won't allow those around you with ill intentions to truly see you, to discern who you really are, your identity. Because if they knew who you will ultimately become, if they knew the heights that God was getting ready to take you to, they would never separate themselves from you. God will often show you who people are before he elevates you, before he takes you higher. Because then you will know how to handle them once he does. He had to show you that they were artificial. He had to show you that they were fake. He had to show you that they could not be trusted. When God begins to remove people from your life who constantly disrespect you, the best thing you could ever do is let them leave. Let them go and do not look back. Because when you fully grasp that people don't hold your destiny, they can't tell you who you are and they can't stop you from becoming, you move differently. You move in peace and not in competition. You move in peace and not unrest. You move in peace and not worry. Because you know you can rest assured that when God gets ready to call your name, he will call your name no matter where you find yourself seated. In this dream, this woman is positioned. She is seated in a shadow. But then all of a sudden she hears her name called. But what's interesting is that her name is not called by this leader that is on this stage. Her name is called by a voice that is echoing above this leader positioned on this stage. This echoing voice would represent the voice of God because we know that Jesus has been given the name that is above every name. And we know that everything on earth, in earth, in heaven has to bow and submit to the authority of that name. So even though this false leader who overlooked this woman didn't call her name, her name was called by the one with all power in his hand and the very one who ignored her had to escort her into her higher position to this stage, to this elevated platform. It reminds me of that verse in Proverbs which reads, the Lord can control a king's mind as he controls a river. The heart of a king is a canal, a stream in the hand of the Lord. He can direct, turn, incline it as he pleases. This verse speaks on the providence of God. The providence of God at play means that no matter what is happening around us, the foresight of God is always on the forefront. God is constantly preserving and governing all things. Every detail of our lives, it means that God is in full control. And because he is in full control, that means that he is ultimately in control control of how others tend to treat you. And when he gets ready to move, he will move upon the heart of the very ones who have treated you as though you were nothing. I like the scripture that says he will make your enemies your footstool. Footstools were created in the 1800s. There were wooden steps on more than 12 inches tall and they were used to help those with height deficits. Those who were on the shorter side reach things that were otherwise unreachable. Therefore, footstools are used to help people in low position reach higher heights and destinations that would be otherwise wise unattainable. So when God says that he will make your enemy your footstool, he is saying that he will use your enemies to level you up. In this dream, the shadow is lifted. The shadow is removed. And the woman rises up. This represents the woman rising up as the veil of obscurity that was overshadowing her life is removed. It represents her moving into the position that was ordained for her by God. The woman then walks up five wooden steps to get to this stage. The number five represents the grace of God. Even if no one else in this world knows your name, God knows your name. And when he calls you forth, you will not be denied because the grace of God will precede you. You will go forth to your next level because the voice of God, the calling of God, the providence of God will always supersede the voice of anyone else. In the book of 1 Samuel, we find a very young Samuel asleep in his bed. He hears a voice calling his name. God calls Samuel by name three different times and each time he goes to Eli. In essence, Samuel does not discern that God is calling him. He thinks that it is Eli who happens to be spiritually blind and deaf. Finally, Eli advises him, telling him that it had to be God speaking. And the next time he hear the voice calling to him, that he should answer God directly. And the next time God calls his name, he answers. And then the Lord speaks, giving Samuel details of his prophetic assignment. God was calling Samuel's name because he was calling him forward in his prophetic office, activating his prophetic mantle. God was calling him to the next level of his life. It's very important for us to have the ability to discern the voice of God above the voice of others. Because if we don't, then it could hold us back from getting details and access to what God has for us next. In this dream, the woman hears this voice, calls her name. She doesn't hesitate. She gets up and she walks. And as she walks up the steps, her clothing is transformed. And while I know that her clothing is different, I don't know what she had on before. Clothing in dreams will represent a mantle. It
It represents spiritual power and authority, who you are and what you are to accomplish in this earth. So because I did not know what this woman was wearing before, this would mean that when God gets ready to take you higher, when is your moment? It won't matter where you were before. God has the power to transform you and to make you brand new. What stood out to me the most about her clothing change was her new purple and gold headdress. The colors purple and gold can represent royalty or wealth. Further, a headdress can be synonymous with the crown. Therefore, it is a symbol of a high office, monarchy, or some other position that marks the wearer as distinguished. So this woman went from hidden and disguised to distinguished. She went from living in the shadows of others to being mantled in a high office. It is important that you know who you are as a child of God. When you know who you are, you are not pressed by those who don't. You simply move in your lane, knowing that no weapon that is formed against you will prosper. Knowing that when is your turn, when is your time, because of the providence of God, no one can stop or alter or deny what he has for you. You simply need to discern when God is calling you, rejecting every other false voice echoing around you. I dreamed that I was standing in the lobby of a church called Victory. There was a pastor standing to my right and another person standing to my left. I kept trying to focus to hear what the pastor was saying in my right ear, but the other person in my left ear kept speaking over what he was trying to say. Finally, I was able to hear what the pastor was saying. He said, you are very special. So the first aspect of this dream that I noticed was that I was standing in a lobby. Lobbies often represent a place of transition, a place that you are either entering or exiting. Transition can be difficult and it's never really easy because it represents walking into something that is new and you don't all the time know that you're going in the right direction. But when you are led by God, you are always going in the right direction, even if it leads you to a less than desirable place. I also noticed that the name of the place that I was standing in was a church called Victory. This would mean that I was standing in a place of transition and victory at the same time. And while I was standing in this uncertain but victorious time, I was encountered by two voices. In my right ear was the voice of the pastor of the church. In my left ear was a person blocking everything that the pastor was trying to say. Every time the pastor would speak, this person would speak. A pastor or a spiritual leader in a dream will often represent Jesus because pastors are shepherds of a church or shepherds of a flock. And we know the scripture says that the Lord is our shepherd. Further, as we have discussed in several videos before, your right side will often represent the right way to go, the blessing of God. And the left side will represent something that needs to be left behind. It will represent a way that is not prosperous. There's also a saying, when things go left. This saying, when things go left, means something is taking a turn for the worse or something is going horribly wrong. Therefore, the pastor in my right ear will represent Jesus trying to speak with me, trying to lead me during a season of transition where I may have been feeling a bit lost, a bit overwhelmed. However, the problem is the person in my left ear attempting to overshadow, to overthrow the voice of God. But this voice in my left ear needed to be ignored and overlooked because it would ultimately keep me from transitioning properly. Instead of leading me to a blessing, it could result in me being led into a place where things would go horribly wrong. Suppose Samuel had have ignored the voice of God when he was calling his name. What would have become of him? Because if he had not answered the voice of God, he would have released everything God was calling him to become on this earth. How many times do we allow doubt, negative self-talk, or the discouraging voices of others to overshadow the voice of God in our lives, to deter us away from what God is calling us to? When God is trying to transition you, when he is attempting to bring you into something new, you can't afford to allow how others feel about you or how you even feel about yourself to distract you away. Because in this dream, I was allowing this person in my left ear to distract me away from what God was trying to whisper in my right ear, you are very special. And so are you. Because 1 Peter 2 9 says, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a special people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies, the wonderful deeds and virtues and perfections of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. So this scripture says that God has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Darkness is skotos and it means obscurity or shadiness. And we know that shadiness is synonymous with the word shadow. In this verse, the word light is also false, but it's used to mean to make manifest or to shine like the sun. This reminds me of the first dream where we discussed that the woman was called out of the shadow, out of the shadiness, out of the darkness, and into the manifestation of what God had promised. She was elevated in front of everyone in that audience who did not know her name, who did not know who she was, who didn't recognize her. Likewise, there will come a time when God begins to manifest his glory 
glory in your life. He will bring you into the place that he promised. But you have the responsibility of knowing who you are, even when those around you don't. In a dream, I heard a familiar portion of scripture. I will make your name great. In the book of Genesis, this is what God tells Abram. We know that eventually God changes Abram's name from Abram to Abraham because the name Abram means exalted father and the name Abraham means the father of many nations. So even when Abram was not a father, had no promise, had no clue about who he was, God knew who he was and called his name anyway. With human beings, it's typically the other way around. You'll notice that when you begin to step out in faith, when you begin a thing, start to do what you believe God called you to do, you don't get a lot of applause. You get overlooked and you get ignored as insignificant. It is often only when you begin to get traction, when you begin to get fame, get notoriety, get money, that humans will begin to trust that you are who God says you are. They will often require evidence of your identity before they believe that God called you to move forward. It is only when you begin to progress that they pretend to know you. But because God is God, he already knew that Abraham, the father of many nations, was locked inside of Abram. Likewise, he already knows who you are. He already knows the potential that is locked up on the inside of you. He already knows what you will become. But like Abram, you will also be required to take steps of faith toward what God knows you to be, despite what everyone else thinks you are not. Because see, Abram's parents named him Abram, but God called him Abraham. In this life, people will always call you what they think you are. They will value you based on what they see outwardly. They will limit you because of their limited information. They name you because of their own insecurities or scarcity mentality. But when you're dealing with a God of impossibility, nothing shall be impossible, no matter how far-fetched it appears. And he will use them, your enemies, as your footstool to reach what they believe was unreachable. Abraham found himself in a place of transition because God was calling him away from the familiar, away from his family, away from his friends, and into a place that was unfamiliar, a place that God would eventually manifest as he began to take steps toward it. I wonder if Abram shared his vision with others. I wonder if his idolatrous father, Sarah, spoke up calling him crazy. I wonder how many voices Abram had to fight through in order to become Abraham. I wonder how many voices he had to ignore in order to discern the voice of his heavenly father. How many people doubted who he was, saying that you're not even a father. How are you going to become the father of many nations? God speaks to Abram at a time where he could have easily ignored the voice of God. He could have easily not accepted the call. But despite everything he saw in his eyes, he decided to trust with his heart. He decided to believe in this God who said that he will make his name great. The word make is gadol. It means to grow, to promote, to make power to the word great is shame. It means honor, distinguished, but it also means renown and fame. In essence, when God says that he will make Abram's name great, he is saying that Abram had to be made into Abraham. Abraham had to be pulled out of him. And in doing so, God will give him a powerful, honorable, distinguished name. Whatever seemingly impossible promise God has given to you, stand on it. Believe it. Begin to take steps of faith toward it. And watch God bring you out of a place of obscurity and into the manifestation of of possibilities. Because as you are walking in faith, God is changing your name. He is causing you to grow, causing you to evolve, developing you, bringing to the forefront your true identity. And he will not stop until he pulls every bit of potential, grace, anointing out of you that will lead to you accomplishing great feats in his name. In the book of Judges, we find Gideon hiding from his enemy, the Midianites, in a wine press. In this place of hiding, God calls him brave. He also reminds Gideon that he is with him and the children of Israel. Gideon he replies by saying, if you are with us, then why are we having all of this warfare? Why are all these bad things happening to us? He also asked God, where are the wondrous works that I have heard so much about? God ignores what he is asking and abruptly tells Gideon that he will be instrumental in delivering the Israelites from the enemy, the Midianites. Because see, while Gideon was looking for an answer from God, God knew that he was the answer from God. Your purpose will often lie in the problems and the issues that concern you the most because God wants you to rise up to be the solution in the earth. After God calls Gideon, he immediately questions God asking, how can I do this? My family is the least of the families in this country and I am the least of my family. Gideon didn't believe that he was worth very much. In his mind, it would be impossible for him to accomplish anything great because of where he was born and who he was born through. But God is not limited by your human genealogy. He is not intimidated by your physical DNA because your spiritual DNA goes back to 
Abraham, the father of many nations, a man who was initially nothing but made something by an incredible God of impossibility. And so the same potential that lie in a man like Abraham also lies in Gideon, also lies within you. God is no respecter of persons. Therefore, he doesn't focus on popularity. He doesn't focus on human heritage. God looks beyond the surface and into the heart, calling those things that be not as though they were, calling cowards brave, calling harlots housewives, calling the poor rich, calling the broken healed, choosing those that the world overlook, raising them up, equipping them, turning nothing into something, water into wine, making us what we ought to be despite what everyone else thought we should be. God doesn't care about where you are raised. He doesn't care about the names of your parents because he sent his only begotten son through the bloodline of murderers, liars, adulterers, and a harlot. And when he calls your name, it's because he sees beneath the surface and he truly knows your identity. When Gideon was hiding in that wine press away from his enemies, human beings would have called him a coward, but God called him brave because God saw what he was at his core, not what this world had caused him to become. Because I wonder who told Gideon that he was the least. I wonder who was whispering doubt in his left ear when God was trying to whisper greatness in his right. Who told him he was the least of his tribe, the least of his family? Clearly it wasn't God because his name also means great warrior. And so despite what he thought, God intended to bring that great warrior out of Gideon. God overlooked his insecurities and ultimately Gideon overlooked the lies that called him weak and tried to intimidate him into a path of cowardice because God knew his name. He did exactly what God said his name could do. He delivered the children of Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Believe God when he calls your name because he knows your name. And not only does he know your name, he knows who you are at your core. Further, he knows what he wants to manifest in and through you. Whatever you have to do, I encourage you to limit the voices of naysayers in your ear because the enemy will use whomever or whatever he has to so that you will remain where you are, not accomplishing what God knows you're fully capable of accomplishing. On the other side, God will use whomever and whatever he wants as your footstool to elevate you. But ultimately, it doesn't matter what anyone else calls you. Just choose not to answer them. Instead, answer God's call. Father, we thank you today that you are in control. You're in charge. You're the God who knows and calls us by name. Lord, may we discern your voice when you call us out of the shade, out of the shadows, out of the obscurity and into your marvelous light. Cause courage to arise in us so that we take steps toward the impossible. Cause us to trust wholeheartedly what you have said about us despite what this world tries to call us. Cause the warrior in us to arise when the enemy attempts to diminish us. Cause us to cower back from the truth of how special we are in your eyes. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for being here today. I pray that you have an excellent rest of your day, weekend, and a great week. And as always, thank you for watching.